Hi there. It is uh, another week, another day, another dollar, all that good stuff. I am at another building on campus, another random room that I found to uh, put myself, a little store closet with some computers sitting down there waiting to be fixed or what have you. No idea but I'm here. Um, so that's what happens when doors are unlocked. People jump in and use their laptops to record vlogs for Europe. Um, <laughs> it is finally nice outside. We've had a, a miserable, miserable winter and uh, the first half of spring. It's been crazy rainy, like uh, record rains. We've had flooding and today it's 26 above and the birds are chirping and it is a beautiful. Uh, and today um, I, was, I could actually enjoy some of that. Um, which is, I guess, part of the joy of doing a PhD is you've got flexibility of time. So I'm going to be working uh, most of the weekend, getting ready to travel to Copenhagen next week. Um, but uh, today I'm going to enjoy this weather while it's not raining and do some lawn mowing, um, <laughs> some edging, some pulling of weeds. Um, and I guess, you know, I, I, that's one of the things I really like about the PhD is that I kind of skip my own schedule. Um, the flip side is I don't really, weekends no longer exist. They're just other days that you have to work and do transcriptions and so on. Um, yesterday uh, was the last day of a grounded theory workshop that I went to. Um, in Australia, there's no coursework requirement for PhDs, uh, which is quite different than the American um, Canadian model, which typically has six to nine courses of coursework that you have to engage in before you uh, uh, before before you work on your thesis or your dissertation. Another language thing in, in Australia, a master's and uh, a PhD is called a thesis. In Canada, it's a dissertation for the PhD, a thesis for the master's. All these language things are kind of difficult to get your mind around because it's all different. Like a subject um, here is what a course is called in North America. Um, a semester in North America is called a session here. The sessions run different, which makes sense because the year is different. Um, but figuring all that out is just, it's taken some time to get used to. Um, and it is what it is. Um, the Going back to this grounded theory workshop, um, because there's no coursework requirement, you have to kind of make your own opportunities and, and when you, and, and solicit and go out there and find out what's available. So I really have to pay attention to the workshops that are being offered um, here and at other institutions in Australia um, to find out where my knowledge gaps are and fill those either through buying, getting the book from the from the library, or buying the textbook or the book, and reading it, or uh, uh, like I did last week, uh, uh, finding someone who's an expert in the field and bringing them in and, and getting their ear, or uh, in the case of this week, um, finding uh, there was a, a workshop that was offered. Um, from a visiting person uh, who was conducting workshops here, and it was free. So I had some some terrible campus food for three days, and uh, and got to just really engage in the idea of grounded theory, um, and 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 the things that kind of go around that. Because um, of my supervisor, I'd already done I've already done my first three chapters for the most part. So my introduction chapter, my lit review chapter, and my methods chapter are for the most part I would say. 90, 80 to 90% done. At the end of my first year, that was completed and I go to candidature, which is where my committee reads that and they either approve it, uh, approve it with revisions or they fail me. And then I have to cry a lot and go back to Canada. Luckily, it didn't happen. It was uh, approved with slight revisions. The revisions I had completed within an evening and sent off and good to go. Um, the, the, for me, my, my methods chapter is mostly done. So the methods, I've already got a really good firm idea of what what I wanted to do, what my data collection was going to look like, and even what my analysis should start to look like. But it was really great to, to, to sit down and have a couple days to, to not to, to put my transcriptions aside and just focus on what my analysis would be like, how I was going to approach that. And I mean, from a very, from theoretical, from the very top, you know, 50,000 foot view to the really micro, to the, to looking at what does initial coding look like? What does focus coding look like? What does theoretical coding look like? Um, uh, and put all that together uh, in some really concrete and, and relatively simple ways. Um, so I'm kind of inspired and excited because it was, um, it's the perfect timing as far as where my academic studies are, my finishing my data collection, et cetera, et cetera, to be taking this course uh, was just great timing. 
So that's me. I'm on campus. Uh, I'm, I'm done for today. Uh, it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to go home. I'm going to do some edging. I'm going to do some transcriptions. I'm going to meet some friends at 415 on a patio that overlooks the river because I've had a, a, a non-stop probably 14 or 15 days now. And then uh, I've got a very, very full weekend full of um, uh, research-related uh, activity. And then I'm off to Copenhagen next Wednesday. So lots to get done before then, and my lawn is